Welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSP Magazine. Every company has a story to tell, from the small startup to the large enterprise, and everything in between. This is one of them. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. Joining us today, my name is Angela Marafino, and this is a Their Story episode with Level Effect. Uh, I also have co-host Sydney Kraut here with me. Hi, Sydney. Hey, how's it going, Angela? Hi, nice to have you here. Thank you, thank you. From Level Effect, we have Anthony Bendis and Will Nissler. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Will. Hey, Hi, Angela. Angela. Hey, What's going on, Sid? Pretty good, pretty good. Anthony and Will, would you like to introduce yourselves and kind of tell us a little bit about what you both do at Level Effect? Sure. Yeah. Let's uh, let's get started. Um, so I'm one of the uh, the course creators and lab instructors for the Cyber Defense Analyst Bootcamp. Uh, daytime, I'm running as the uh, operations director and uh, kind of really just wearing a, a, lo- a lot of different hats more than anything with that kind of role. <laughs> um, myself really i'm kind of responsible for the day-to-day and then um just at night teaching the live class instructing the students um i guess i can talk a little bit more about the background afterwards so after will kind of talks about himself too awesome yeah uh so uh just like anthony i'm also one of the course creators and uh instructors for the live class um during the day i handle more of the infrastructure side of things so uh trying to make sure that all of our cloud infrastructure is set up all right, that the students aren't having any issues accessing things. And um, yeah, lots of troubleshooting there. Uh, It's a fun problem of trying to make things just vulnerable enough where, uh, you know, students can actually interact and have some exploits and uh, have some fun in the environment, but not vulnerable enough so that they break all of our stuff. Um, So um, yeah, and then during the day also, uh, I'm handling more of the academy side. So I try and check on student progress, uh, try and keep the, the team apprised of you know, how students are doing, um, you know, if there's any exceptions we need to make um, and things like that, just kind of being the point of contact there and trying to get people placed in jobs, so. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. And then, um, Anthony, do you want to give a little background on like just level effect uh, quickly for anyone who isn't aware of what level effect is? Yeah, for sure. So level effect, uh, we're primarily a uh, cyber education training provider, and we our focus is actually our cyber defense analyst boot camp. It's our attempt at making uh, a training curriculum for newcomers to the field, newcomers to the industry to go through what we consider to be probably, I guess, the most accurate portrayal based on our experience of working the field for a number of years collectively here at Level Effect uh, of what it's what it's like being in cybersecurity. And we do that over the course of 13 weeks, um, a very hands-on course with an intense amount of challenges and submissions, which we like to uh, be proud about. Uh, definitely uh, like to work the students pretty hard. I think I don't, I don't know what the number is. I think it's somewhere around 70 to 80% of our curriculum really is hands-on submissions and um, the live classes really kind of put you to the test for that. And then at the end, we put you through a battery of uh, challenges and our CDCP certification, if that wasn't enough. And um, you do that over about 30 to 40 hours. And then at the end of that, we kind of give you a little seal of approval that you are good to go. Four of us believe that you're ready to uh, kick some butt in cyber. So that's a little bit about the boot camp in a nutshell. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so let's jump right in. Um, mm-hmm. Why is your boot camp specifically a good fit for newcomers or people who don't have the traditional uh, background? I think with with our boot camp, really, it's it's the training that we kind of all wish we we had. You know, not the. Not, not so much that theoretical broad strokes, um, what you read in textbook, what, what they tell you that you should know, all the, the wonderful terms and definitions, which, which is good, you know, being able to kind of speak cybersecurity, having that vocabulary and vernacular to express and communicate cyber risk and threats and how to remediate, prevent and all that good stuff, right? Um, it's good to know it, but going through it and going through the uh, the troubleshooting portion of it and the errors and the unique one-offs and the edge cases that's really what we try to encompass with our our training and um 
that that's sort of the real world. You know, nothing really goes according to plan, especially in cybersecurity and especially on the weekends when you think you got some time off, all of a sudden there's an incident or a breach going on and the whole industry needs to respond. So, um, I, you know, I think our boot camp really speaks to that and it makes sure that students go through as much of an accurate portrayal of what they would expect to be experiencing inside the field with enough of the theoretical terms and definitions to keep you going along and understanding the pace, but really much more focused on your day-to-day tasks of what you'll actually be doing, resolving, responding to threats and, uh, and remediating, actually remediating them. And we do that with um, malware and incidents that we've actually seen, that we've experienced, and um, also based on some more of the modern trends that we see day-to-day as well, too. It's kind of a, a good overview of all of it. So am I right here in the fact that I think every single one of us has a non-traditional background, is that correct? I believe that's correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 we all come from very different walks of life. I think, right? Definitely. So, yeah. So let's let's go around, uh, and then I'll end with Sid, so he can give his experience on having actually <laughs> uh, participated in your boot camp. Uh, Anthony, what was your background? Yeah, sounds good. I'm looking forward to hearing what Sid's got to say. It's going to be good. Um, my background. So I, I actually originally got started more on the risk management side when I first got into cybersecurity. But before that, I was working in just in general hotel operations, uh, hospitality, food and beverage and such. And um, I had moved into a position where I found that I was a lot more involved in risk management and, and project management. Mm-hmm. And I got involved in that side of things in the, in the luxury hotel management side and that sector. And uh, through there, I was really starting to realize how much I was involved in day-to-day compliance and policy. And I, I really liked it. And I, th- I thought, you know, I think it might be good if I could maybe get a little more technical as well at this point. I was really enjoying the actual overview, uh, general expectations of uh, policy and compliance. But what would it be like to get involved with the day-to-day nitty-gritty technical and um at that point, I started to kind of self-teach myself. And, and at that time, there was really no easy way to get into cyber. I mean, th- this is years back. I've been in the industry now for about seven plus years or so. But back then, there was there was no real easy route. So, um, you know, to kind of give you a bit of an example, the first thing I got told by my closest friend in IT was, why don't you go ahead and learn the difference between Java and JavaScript? And that, that was the advice I got, I got when I first got started. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go learn this. I'm going to go prove it. I, I can do cyber. I'm going to learn Java and JavaScript because I thought that's what it was, right? It was hard to figure that out. And uh, before I knew it, I actually started to learn web development and build React mm-hmm. applications until I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, <laughs> I'm so far off the track. This is not cyber. Um, that would come back and help me later on, but that's besides the point. I didn't really know where I was going. And then finally, um, I started to make a couple of different associations and contacts with people inside the industry. And they gave me a little bit more information about focusing more on the Windows, Linux, and networking, getting an understanding of, of triaging cyber threats and, and so forth. And um, through more self-teaching and just going out and finding out maybe I need a, a Security Plus or a Net Plus and different certs and navigating that whole kind of scene, I eventually was able to kind of self-teach my way to a point where I was able to get into analyst and engineer positions um, within the field through, through contacts and reaching out to them and proving that I could do it. And, uh, I was given a shot by people thought that, you know, he's got some experience, he's got some drive, so let's see what he can do. And, and I proved myself. And I think that was, that was a good turning point. And it was during that time that I found a really strong passion in penetration testing. And I said, well, I think I'm going to go for this. Like th- this, this seems like the thing for me, I really like breaking things. And I eventually was able to um, get some experience in that side of things and then started to do some pro bono, simple consulting and reaching out and eventually was able to get into a full-time position of just full-time penetration testing and consulting. Um, I did that for a number of years and then kind of met Greg and Rob through that time teaching at different places. And um, and then I guess they convinced me on on this idea over here, like, let, let's go make something really cool at Level Effect. And, uh, and that's kind of how I got here. And in, in, in a nutshell, I guess that's my story. If I could kind of summarize on how I got here from my, my background. Awesome. What about you, Will? Yeah. Um, so I actually started as a roofer um, before I really started, you know, figuring out what I wanted to do when I grew up. And, um, you know, I tried college for a little bit. I was doing like kinesiology. 
uh, realized that didn't really work out for me, but I was still interested in how, you know, like the human body worked. And eventually, you know, a lot of different signs pointed to, well, maybe I should join the military. And, uh, and I did, uh, where I was enlisted for about six years. I worked intelligence uh, as a Spanish linguist, actually. So nothing networking, wow. um, but got placed in with, uh, while I was working Intel, I uh, got placed in Greg, uh, or, you know, in Greg's shop uh, with him as my mentor. And I still remember the first day um you know going up to him being like okay you're you're my mentor i guess he said yep i guess so I said okay what should we do he's like well i guess you should start working on things and then if you have any questions come uh, come ask me I said okay that sounds good and um you know it's still just kind of developed from there um you know i went from not really knowing how the internet worked to you know looking at you know, wireless protocols and things like that, just kind of as Greg was uh, feeding me little tidbits. And um, I told him, I said, you know, if you're ever on the other side, um, you know, outside of government, um, would love to reconnect and all that. And sure enough, after I got out of the military, um, right around COVID, where I was trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to do, um, you know, I saw that Greg and Rob were doing the boot camp, and I reached out and said, hey, man, like, I want to uh, I want to help out. I want to test. Let me know what I can do. And so I got to uh, test the first cohort and then come on as an instructor later, uh, which, you know, then developed into, uh, um, yeah, working at working their infrastructure side. But also mm -hmm. while I was, you know, after I had finished the, um, you know, the testing of the boot camp, um, I was also working at you know, as a call center operator where we were selling, you know, just dinosaur server parts to the government uh, that for things that were still just running, uh, even, even out of warranty. And, um, and I saw that, you know, they were trying to stand up a top secret uh, network and uh, they were running some Nessus scans to get everything set up. And I said, Hey, Oh, I know how to do that. And they said, well, we could use the help. Do you want to come in and, and help us out? I said, sure. Um, you know, things kind of developed. This was while I was working the call center and eventually they said, well, Hey, we need a sysadmin. I said, okay, like I can, I can try that. Um, was my first exposure to cloud computing and AWS and, uh, you know, felt like I had no business managing a developer shop, but helping them try and secure and looking at best documentation and practices and, um, you know, worked my way into security engineering, which, you know, then transferred over uh, at the same time with level effect. So. That's awesome. You definitely uh, increased your responsibilities from the uh, yeah. call center. Good for you. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, quickly about me, I'll just say, right, I went to school for art the first time and uh, was going down a, a law school route the second time. Um, and the whole time knew that I wanted to work with technology. Um, didn't really know how or what. Uh, I wanted to do digital office technology, which was the reason I was going to go to law school. And then I didn't want to be an attorney. I didn't want to go to court. Um, so I kind of rethought that and uh, ended up right in cybersecurity via right self self instruction, a different boot camp, and just like anything I could find to get as much knowledge as quickly as possible because I didn't want another four or however many years to change career paths again. So during all that time, right, meeting Greg and kind of understanding what a what a better boot camp could be, just like ideally, um, if you could go make your own and, and have check boxes of like, this is the thing that I didn't really get or was missing or I didn't understand. I think that's kind of what his idea was, right? Of like, there's things that exist. Most boot camps are like coding, right? When you hear the word boot camp traditionally, right? It's like coding boot camp or for de developers. And that's a completely different uh, beast. But what are all the things as a cybersecurity focused professional will you need? Um, and I think, you know, a lot of times it's just, here's things that are in the security plus. You could probably get that book and study all of it and spend all the time figuring it out yourself. Um, may take a little bit longer, but it'll be the same and not really like, grasping what the boot camp is going to have you actually set up to do or accomplish as like your first role. So going into the, what is my first career going to be? It was a lot of the unknown, right? Luckily I had a good friend who <laughs> referred me during the boot camp, and I got my first role as passive uh, vulnerability assessment specialist, right? 
networking. It's all about networking. And did you get the hands-on skills to like do something? So I'll pass it over to Sid to talk about his experience. Sure. Yeah. So I uh, started off working as a security guard, actually, and uh, just really hated working as a security guard. So one night I was on the train coming home and I saw a little ad about like getting into like an IT boot camp. So I signed up the next day, literally. And I went through that first boot camp and got an A plus, got into help desk, and then did that for a few years. And I wanted to make the transition into cybersecurity, but I didn't really know how. So I thought, okay, let me just keep trying this, you know, uh, thing I I figured out. Let me try another boot camp. Let me find a you know a boot camp that I can do. And um, I went through that boot camp. Uh, when I finished, um, I got my first job with uh, a really cool person to my left over here, and. Um, <clears throat> When I got that job, I noticed the I wasn't fully prepared to do a lot of the, the defensive security work. There were some gaps in my knowledge. I, I focused pretty heavily on the offensive stuff when I was in that boot camp. So um, when I got my first job, it was really a lot of learning on the job, and I did that for a few years. And you know, when you're when you're siloed into a role and you're just doing one thing over the course of several jobs, you start to lose a lot of the things you learned originally. Um, so I noticed there were some gaps in my knowledge and uh, reached out to Angela. And she's like, I know these really cool guys at Level Effect, call them and uh, also call Anthony number one. And I was like, oh, of course, of course, you know, Anthony's a great guy. So I reached out and um, yeah, Anthony was like, yeah, come on in, join the boot camp." So I uh, went through the boot camp and actually ended up getting pretty sick uh, last year where I had to drop out. I was, I was really gonna quit at that point. And then Anthony really kind of just convinced me to come back. I was, I, I was talking to him like the first week of the second cohort. And I was like, oh, I'll just come back later. He's like, no, come back now. This is the best time to do it. You, you already got the knowledge. It's still fresh. Just come back, pick up where you left off. If you need more time, so what? We'll be there for you. It's all good. Just, just join. So I came in, knocked out the boot camp, got gold thanks to those guys down there. And uh, yeah, doing pretty good. So working now as a senior threat hunter. Um, so yeah, definitely appreciate it. Can I just say like during that time, because Sid and I have like regular checkups, right? Or like how's work? What's new? What are you struggling with? Let me hear it. And definitely calls decreased during that time because you know the focus that is required to be in a boot camp like this. But every time I talk to him, he's like, you're not going to believe this. I learned something new. I'm learning so much in this. Uh, And so having, right, so he just said he went through one IT course, right, and got A plus. Another boot camp got did you get any other certs during that time? You nope, got, you you got CISA, not during the boot camp, CISA but you had my, it. I got CISA on my own after. Yeah, okay, CISA plus uh, after on his own. Then still it was like, I could learn more here, especially knowing like what my job aspirations are for at least the next year and what I want to learn and fill in gap-wise, right? Every, every time I talked to him, he was like explaining something new he learned, showing excitement about going into this thinking like, I am a professional and I'll probably have to not, not speak out too much so that other students don't feel like, you know, I'm trying to like show yeah. off or anything like that. Not that he would, but just like, right. Being conscientious of the fact that you're already in the field and coming back and being like humbled, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So many times, so many times. Yeah. I'm, like, so, oh, I'm actually going to speak up about that. Cause I have no idea what that means. <laughs> yeah. So, so right. That says one thing in itself. So, what was it like, like the variety of students that you interacted with? Um, and, and, you know, did you learn from just other people in your class as well? I did. Yeah, I learned quite a bit from just people coming from different backgrounds and what skills actually transfer over into cyber that have nothing to do with like being hands on keyboard. A lot of the research skills that a lot of my, my, my classmates had from just doing like HR work, um, a lot of them were working, some of them worked in hospitality as well. Um, the research skills that they had uh, from those jobs transfer like really well over into cyber. So uh, a lot of times we would get into these challenges and we would have to compile things within an hour before presenting. And I found that some of my my cohort mates were able to find things that I even couldn't find with my experience. They were able to locate articles. They were able to pull out specific uh, indicators that we needed to research. Um, Some of them had uh, experience in the industries that we were researching that week in the bootcamp. And they were able to pull pull from that. Uh, we had a, a guy I'll never forget. We went through a whole boot camp together, and I didn't know that he had experience in Linux and that he, you know, had all this experience. 
you know, working with um, IoT systems. And that week we had a, a challenge like that. And we were, we jumped in that challenge and I jumped in, you know, tried to, you know, take the leadership role and say, hey guys, we should do this. And that, you know, this guy jumps in and he's like, no, let me show you this. And then literally for like 90% of the challenge, I was sitting there just listening, taking notes. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so that happened quite a few times. You guys have students coming from like all kinds of different backgrounds. I guess what skills from other careers have you guys seen transfer over into cyber really, really well? You know what? <clears throat> I actually really like that. Th th that's something that we've noticed here, just working with all the students, different backgrounds, that there's some really good applicable skills that they've learned, very good transferable skills. Um, for, from things that I think we've noticed, um, accounting's huge. Accounting's actually got a huge overlap with cybersecurity. You're looking for um, outliers, abnormalities, risk from financial records and data. And essentially what we're doing here in cyber just different tools. You're not living in Excel. You're just using different types of tools. So when we have people with accountants, uh, accounting backgrounds, financial backgrounds, they find it an easy segue into cyber to kind of change the, the tools that they're playing with. Um, and then I think I've also noticed the the academic type of backgrounds, the, those researchers, um, English, social science, and so forth, arts, I think it's natural for the, for that type of background for maybe that they might feel that it's probably a pretty big leap to, to get into cyber, but they don't really realize that a lot of what we do day to day is researching and troubleshooting and, and digging into things and finding how things work and reading documentation. And the people that come to our boot camp with that background, they never believe me. I always tell them on the calls, like, Hey, like you, you're going to love the fact that you went and got an English degree or you're, you're in arts or in some kind of background. And they're like, yeah, 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 you're just saying that. I'm like, no, you, you, you'll see. And uh, as soon as we get to the parts where they actually have to start doing things on their own and compiling all that research, kind of like what Sid was mentioning there, like the, like the reporting and, and, and digging into stuff, they're like, whoa, I, I actually see it clicking now. So I think th those are definitely two big areas um, that, that I would say transfer over well. And then something else that I think we notice is just people that come from hobbyist type of like backgrounds, like even... All, if you if you if you look at gamers like people that build PCs like messing around with them from from their youth or whatever like going to land parties and stuff they actually acclimate to cyber pretty well because they've done a lot of the troubleshooting so shout out to any of the gamers that might listen to this um, if you're not in cyber and you want to kind of pivot in you, all those uh, nights of troubleshooting drivers and getting that graphics card to work to play the game that you love that's actually going to be pretty applicable to cyber <laughs> but yeah there's some things I've noticed. What about Will? I think he's seen some things too. Yeah, um, I've actually been kind of surprised with, um, you know, the non-technical backgrounds. Like I've seen uh, guys come through from like farming, construction, and, um, you know, and uh, even military experience too. Um, you know, no matter the role, like whether you were infantry, whether you were intel, you know, um, I think there's just like a level of, um, you know, like that work ethic that uh, really kind of, uh, carries people, uh, you know, whether it's that drive to kind of learn new things and, um, you know, and take on, you know, all the different CTF uh, type platforms or, you know, go and just get sucked into a Google rabbit hole, like learning, you know, all these different techniques. I think uh, there's a lot of, uh, of grit that really comes with that as well. And that, uh, you know, curiosity and desire to learn. Um, that I've seen come from that as well. And then uh, healthcare too. Um, you know, we've had some uh, some healthcare workers come through and they seem to do really well, um, you know, especially on the briefing side. Maybe it's, you know, that bedside manner a little bit, being able to, you know, tell an executive, you know, here's, here's what we found and here's why it's going to be okay. All the things that we've done to kind of remediate. And um, yeah, I think those are, those are some others that I've seen as well. 100% agree that no matter what your background is, there's probably something that you've learned that you can start putting those skills towards, right? Your future career in cybersecurity. But now, right, uh, there's hardly any jobs that don't interact with some form of technology, even farmers, construction. There's somebody walking around with a tablet doing something, controlling something. Um, the systems you're using and the right hardware and all the things are run buy something that's probably connected to the internet. So I, I just love always learning about someone new who, right, came from somewhere that I had never met anybody come from and just like hearing, right, 
uh, what they brought to the table. It's very cool. What's it been like for you both, uh, Anthony and Will, now uh, educating newcomers the field since you've been doing it for a couple of years? It, it, it's it's been kind of interesting in the sense where, like I, I you know, for for both of us, we we come from a background where we're not traditionally educators schooled, right? So we kind of approached some things initially of like let's specifically make it some of the training that we want the students experience that maybe we didn't get. And I guess a little bit of the irony in that is we, we kind of learned along the way that students that were, were learning from us, they almost just wanted to hear more of the instructors between the four of us kind of walking them through and making it relative to them more than they just wanted the content that they were missing. And I think th that was kind of interesting for, I, it, when we were thinking about it and looking back, we thought maybe covering those gaps that, that we didn't get when we first got started, just like having the technical knowledge and training and, and, and labs to get you through that is enough. And that's what, what people are looking for. But more than not, they were just really looking for someone like one of us to walk them through that knowledge instead. Like it wasn't so much the, the quality of the content per se, just the quality of the care of the instructor being there and, and helping and making it relative to them. So that that's actually really interesting. And that, that's something that we started to pivot more towards of just making sure that what can we do when we build our, our bootcamp further and we continue to, to update it? Um, how do we give more time to the students with us? And I think that started to become more of a valuable perspective for us that it's not just the quality of the content per se, but really having someone there to be with you and make it relative to you was actually much more impactful. So th th that, that was an interesting lesson kind of seeing that. Uh, I think uh, for me, it, it really highlighted a little bit more of, you know, some of the frustrations in the industry right now, as far as training goes as well. Um, you know, you could hear about, you know, all the, all the positions that are available and how there's a training gap and a hiring gap and all that. Um, but, you know, I've watched students go through, you know, from not having any experience into cybersecurity to being able to triage a windows endpoint and, you know, evaluate logs and piece things together and, you know, communicate that in a really relative way, still struggling to, you know, find a position out there. Um, you know, it's like boot camp has become a dirty word um, where, you know, some hiring managers won't even give you a second look if you have it on your resume. Um, so I think for me, that's, that's kind of been a big lesson learned as far as like the current situation that is cyber right now. Um, and one of the biggest frustrations, uh, that, you know, I want to start to inspire change in that because, um, you know, it, it doesn't appear to be a skill gap anymore at that point. Uh, there's, there's something else going on. Right. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Jump to the next question here, guys. If there was someone listening to the podcast right now and they were seriously considering taking a level effect boot camp, I guess how many hours outside of the classroom should they plan on spend, I guess, spending studying? Outside of the class. Um... So the boot camp week to week, we we kind of give a general expectation that the self-paced work you're, you're, that you do on the like the Friday to Monday prep and whatnot, getting ready for the live class. So that's about eight to twelve hours, and then the weekly is about eight ish hours around that point. So we kind of peg twenty ish hours, twenty to twenty five to be safe. But I mean, if if you really want to push yourself and go more, um, I think realistically that that number does go up if you want to really dive into it understand what's happening. And, and it's, it's, there's a big difference between just collecting information and just like attending and listening and taking it all in. And then there's a difference between actually applying it. So while we, we can be as hands-on with you as possible, you're still sort of following a curriculum, right? With us. So uh, there is a difference for when you step out of your own comfort zone outside of someone directing you what to do and then say, you know what? I'm on my own. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to come up with my own learning plan. I'm going to develop my own project. I'm going to spin up a home lab. I'm going to research and, and apply and find a problem and solve it the way that I want to my own. If you can find time to factor that into your learning aside with the boot camp, I think that's really going to kind of get you to that gold level, like, like pushing yourself kind of exceeding where you want to be. And so th there's really two phases, right? Like week to week, 20, 25 hours of boot camp. 
if you really want to push yourself more and expedite your results, um, probably tack on another maybe five to 10 hours in your week. And I think that's, that's a pretty safe bet. And then whoever wants to f- f- kind of fall within which category, I think that'll be more up to you. And remind me, is it six, is it six months? 13 weeks, 13 weeks, 13 weeks with uh with 14th week being the exam. Okay. I, I like to tell people you can do anything in that amount of time, right? Like it's <laughs> yeah. not forever. You're going to hopefully spend time after class on the weekends in yeah. your study buddy groups or on your own or whatever it is, um, doing mm. the extra work and no, you can't go out and party or like <laughs> spend yeah. as much time doing the things that you were doing before, but it's only temporary and it's for a really good reason. So stick with it. I know it is hard mm. for some people though, like Like if you're a single mother or like single parent in general, right? It's a little bit more difficult, but again, right? Like just plan ahead, carve out that time and make it happen. Um, I think Sid asked a really great, great question there, which lead like leads me to what can't the boot camp or a boot camp in general not solve for you? And I think right, you guys have some good advice on what it can't just offer by itself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think. There's really no boot camp, or even when you go to school and such. There's some skills that you just need to kind of learn with with life lessons and, and things that you observe. Some of those soft skills that you just really develop with um, business relationships, personal relationships, and, and such. Boot camps really aren't going to help you too much in that area, and I think people really underestimate how important that that side is. Um, learning just how to have an easygoing conversation, connect with someone, develop a rapport. Those are all things that I think people really underestimate. They actually do have a lot of those skills and, 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 and boot camps aren't there to, to help you with that area per se. They're there to maybe bring that side out and have you showcase it. And that's a floor for you to just kind of be in a safe zone experiment and say what you need to say and get some feedback on and get a different perspective for the, with the soft skill side, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think the boot camps are going to help you with that per se. That's something that you have to bring to the table. And that's something that you really have to stand back and evaluate and say, I've learned how to just connect with others through all these different areas of my life and, and start to be okay with that and start to appreciate that that is a pretty valuable strength as well. So that's something to think about. Yeah, I'd say um, the other, the other side that, you know, a boot camp can't provide is, um, you know, it, that genuine interest, right? Like, you know, I think all of us have kind of spoken to the fact that, you know, tech got us interested or we were curious about it. And, um, you know, we, we took that kind of self-initiative. Um, I don't think there's a boot camp out there that, or, you know, any curriculum or college course that can spoon feed you the material and, and make you excited about cybersecurity or what it is that you're doing. Um, there's a level of, uh, that self-drive and, and curiosity that needs to be there as well. Totally agree. Yeah, I know, definitely. I know Sid and I have also like spoken to a lot of people who don't really know where to start as far as applying for jobs. Um, it can't apply for jobs for you. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> there's no <laughs> automated, like you're enrolled, you're fine. That'd be really cool actually. But um <laughs> yeah, you have to do that work. And I think the sooner, the better, right? Um, as soon as you start learning skills, add them to your resume, start applying. All you can do is get interviews and practice interviewing. Um, there's really nothing bad that can happen. I would say like, don't apply to your dream job right away, but get practice ahead of time and apply early. Over to you, Sid. Yeah, I would say um, kind of to touch on what, what Will was just saying there. You know, if someone's really curious and they're just interested in technology, you know, in general, what are some ways that they could start to, you know, I guess, exercise that muscle? I know in the, in the boot camp we did a lot of lab work, but um, is that something you guys would suggest or some other things to someone who's maybe not in a position to go to a boot camp, but just wants to explore technology, maybe cyber? Yeah, I'd say um, e- even in some of the, you know, the intro calls that I've had with people is, um, you know, we'll, give them some resources to go get started. I'd say like, you know, YouTube has just so much content out there that's just free and available. Um, You know, getting into some of these, uh, you know, other platforms like the CTFs or, you know, Blue Team Labs online or or something like that, just to kind of get your feet wet. 
Um, you know, try hack me. I love that they give you like the walkthroughs of, you know, here, here's an example of what's happening. And, um, you know, I'll point people in the direction of, you know, like TCM security as well. Like they've got some really great low cost courses that can get people in, um, you know, as long as they are able to, you know, kind of self pace and, you know, are, are more geared towards that, that independent learning style. Yeah, and I do want to add that Level Effect has some free courses too. Um, hey. <laughs> really good, really good free courses to get your foundation skills there. Kind of adding on to that point for sure is that you, you can definitely start doing some of these things yourself right now. Sid's calling out that course over there. We do have that foundations course on the website for a reason. Um, it's 12 hours of, of free content. And, and we made that for two purposes. The, the first one is to highlight more what Will is saying that... Um, do you, do you actually want to do this? And, and that's what that course is all about is to kind of get someone a sense of what cybersecurity really entails. Um, I think a lot of us, when we first get started, I, I, for sure myself, I thought I'd just be kind of like hacking away all day, right? Like that, that's, that's the image that I got when I first got started. It's, uh, it's all, it's all ethical hacking and, and you're, you know, that whole media trope, the hoodie, the hacker in the basement kind of thing. You kind of get, it gets glamorized when you first start with cybersecurity. And, um, and then when you start learning about what it really is about that whole risk management side, um, I think that's what our course really helps people identify is, is this something that, that you want to do? So before even getting started with us, just definitely make sure that, that you get some awareness about what this industry really entails. It's not just sitting on hack the box all day and blasting away vulnerable boxes. Um, so go, go check it out and, and see what you feel about the day-to-day -day content of being in cyber and, um, get those projects going. Get your hands dirty. Nothing stopping you from doing that right now. Yeah, right now. Go to the website. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, seriously, though, I, I refer people to the free course you have, even if they just start asking me about something. They're like, how do I get into cybersecurity? I'm like, hey, go check this out. Because it's, it's amazing, right? It's something that I know I didn't have. None of us had, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about Sydney, but I, I know we've had conversations in the past mm -hmm. about like, literally spending at least a year trying to figure out what to do with right. like our yeah. lives or like how do you break into cybersecurity? there's tons of information on the internet in no specific order so you could go down the ethical hacking rabbit hole but then like where do you start and also what is ethical <laughs> and who's there to guide you right so i think the extra leg up that you guys offer is being there existing in general um right people can just call you and and have a, a chat um if you put your email anywhere on the website anthony sends an email like it is coming from anthony it's not even like it just says his name and it's other people it's anthony uh it's automated but like it goes to him and then right you can follow up and actually speak yeah. with him will rob uh mm -hmm. anybody and just say i'm interested in this like what do you think there's no commitment right it's just a conversation and I think that's really amazing and something that's absolutely needed. That's literally my answer to anyone who comes up to me now and says they want to get into cybersecurity. I'm like, just call Level Effect. Just call Level Effect. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you're, you're raising a pretty good point there. And we, we, we don't have salespeople over right. here. Like it, it's, it's just us. It's just us instructors and course creators. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, like when you when you reach out to us, it's us like you're, you're speaking to myself or Will, Gregor, Rob, one of us is going to kind of give you uh, the rundown on cyber. We're going to try to make it relative to you, get to know your background and and give you an honest answer. And we're also going to tell you how hard it is to get into it, too. Like what, we're not going to paint any um, fuzzy pictures. We're going to give it to you straight. We always kind of joke around about how we would make the worst salespeople ever because <laughs> yeah. uh, more often than not, we're trying to tell students like how <laughs> how hard this this might be and how yeah. our boot camp is. You know, it's definitely not easy, but um, you know, we'll be there every step of the way. Um, you know, whether it's on Discord, Teams, or you know, checking in on on calls. Amazing! Yeah. Any new initiatives coming up? What can you share? We got a lot of things cooking. Um, so <laughs> earlier I was mentioning how we were kind of learning that lesson, right? Like people wanted to see, talk to more of us, right? Like they wanted more instructor interaction. And that's something that we, we already kicked off. Um, we're quite proud of our Facking Friday, which is definitely a nice, fun play on words. 
And uh, that's open for students and, and alumni now that um, if you graduated the bootcamp, like you can always come back. It's every Friday. We're going to go back and touch base on those core learning outcomes of the bootcamp. And then also throw in some fun projects. We're going to walk you through some home lab creation, um, dive into intelligence and, and whatnot, and give you some more accurate pictures of real life scenarios. So that's once you graduated with us, that that's open to you forever. And so every single Friday, maybe you just want a, a break from your day-to-day -day in reality, come join us on the Friday kind of thing, hang out, talk shop. Um, and, th and that's kind of growing. Um, we have a, a really special guest speaker coming next Friday as well, too, which we're pretty uh, pumped about. Um, John Hammond's going to be joining us next Friday um, with us students and alumni. So that's something that we're trying to build more and more is make a nice little exclusive community and um, and still give that uh, dedicated attention that, and, because we like doing that. Um, and we're also looking to go international. That, that's a pretty big thing. We're touching base in the UK and Australia and then getting interested in that scene because kind of like Will was talking about the landscape, right? Like over here with um, getting a job in cyber, it's we're, we're kind of a couple of years ahead in, in the US and even a little bit more in Canada um, of getting a job. It's more accepted that boot camps are, are approachable, but I think in, in some other areas, they're a couple of years behind. So we're hoping that we can get the, the name out there that it's, it, it is something you can do to get started in cyber. So we're reaching out to the UK, Australia, and um, we just have, we have a first Australian student in this current cohort and he's having a blast. So it's uh, looking forward to seeing his feedback eventually. And hopefully he likes us. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're cooking up some good things and um, also thinking about maybe how can we convert this experience to some degree to an on-demand for people that can't get to a live boot camp because uh, I think there's definitely some good knowledge that we can we can share, make it accessible, and another way to kind of reach a different audience as well. Do you have any more training or workshops coming up? Anything like that? Yeah, Will is just like itching to put together workshop upon workshop of infrastructure. He's, he's always talking about it. Um, once we get the the Fridays and everything nailed down a little bit more and how we kind of want things, then we're going to start building out something, maybe like a monthly kind of uh, webinar workshop where it's just us. It's going to kind of feel like you're in a live class with us, one of our live classes on a Monday to Thursday, but just once a month. And we're just going to walk through some fun stuff and have a good time with the audience and try to make it as engaging as we can and get them involved as well. You know, you mentioned the Discord channel there for a second. Um, and the fact that, right, you're hacking Friday events are for alumni and, and current students. Um, that's awesome. I know I personally felt weird after the boot camp because you're just like, okay, it's done. And then you're like, yeah. Friends? Um, yeah. <laughs> other people that are in the same <laughs> shoe? Like, it feels strange, right? And you're in that go, 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 learn, learn, learn mode. And then all of a sudden it stops and you're like, wow. Yeah. And it is a relief. Like, you feel accomplished, but also you still like kind of want to do more. Yeah. Um, and so that kind of feeds the, okay, I'm still like in learn mode, which is something that never ends in cybersecurity, just a heads up for anybody listening, but you still kind of stay together as a community. And I think that's super important. And it's really awesome that you offer that. Yeah, I would definitely speak to that. Yeah, there's there's always that that what if mark when you finish a boot camp, you're wondering like, can I come back? Can I, you know, revisit the information that I might forget or I may not go over as much in my job. So yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that aspect of being an alumni at a level effect, being able to come back and revisit some of the things that maybe I didn't get a chance to really delve into in the boot camp as much as I would like to. I can come back to it later, you know, reach out to Anthony, reach out to Will, join the Facking Fridays, you know, so, yep, pretty cool. I honestly, as an instructor, I love hearing from students. Like, I love checking in and seeing how they're doing, all the cool things that they're working on. Um, you know, whether they have a quick Python question or need help with a project or, you know, want to prep for, you know, their next technical interview or something, you know, we're always yeah. happy to, um, you know, to hear from you guys and help out where we can. Like the journey definitely doesn't end with level effect with the graduation date or your CDCP. Um, we like to think that, you know, we're there um, throughout, like it doesn't, it doesn't just stop. Definitely. Yeah. I've reached out to both Anthony and Will individually for different things. Um, you know, while I'm, while I'm working, you know, in my career, just coming up, you know, coming up against problems that I just feel like, oh my God, like, how am I going to solve this? Where should I even start? Where do I even begin? You know, and they'll give me some kind of 
trajectory. Now, I'm not saying if you take this boot camp as a professional, they're going to be there as your tech support <laughs> and you get a job. But, <laughs> but I will say they'll be there for you. They'll help you out. They'll get you, you know, pointed in the right direction for the most part. Definitely appreciate it, guys. I think that Good speaks to, to cybersecurity in general, right? I, that was definitely what kept me around um, after starting to network and go out in the community and kind of see, like, how do people in this industry interact with each other? Like, what is it like? Um, knowing that a older, more gatekeeping IT community uh, has existed in the past, right? That was like not necessarily as knowledge sharing or friendly to newcomers or people that, right, weren't already elite. And I think that's one of the things that kept me around, right? Is for the most part, not 100%, but the majority of cybersecurity professionals do want to help each other. And we are like kind of a small community because it's, again, right, we still need a lot of help. And it's a somewhat new industry, uh, new in the naming and, and that others know about it, but we're all trying to help each other. And if you can just say, I know someone who like really works on this thing, maybe they'll be able to answer this question for me. Most of the time, if you reach out, they'll be like, oh yeah, absolutely. Here's a resource or just like, absolutely. I know how to do that or whatever it may be. Um, we all just want to help each other and see each other succeed. Right. So that's one of the things definitely I love about this industry. Yeah, it's a little scary at first when when something is new and emerging and it's all hands on deck. But then, you know, you get that reassurance when you go to the community and you see people posting about it on LinkedIn. Hey, here are the ways we're detecting this. And yeah, there's no patch for this yet, but we're working on this right now. Um, or, hey, there's no, you know, there's no detection for this new exploit that we that we see and everyone's affected by it. Like, you know, you can really lean on the community in that time frame to really, you know, uh, help your company and kind of come up with some answers on what's going on. Yep. So if you're starting out, Level Effect can be that community for you. Um, <laughs> it gives you a tight-knit group of people to at least start your journey with. Anything else you guys want to add? This has been a really great episode. Mm. I don't know. No, no, nothing really else coming to mind over here. Other than, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a lot. We covered a lot of ground right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been, it's been really good. I'm, I'm really happy to, we've done this. It's really good to hear Sid's, uh, input as well too um his experience kind of being with us as well we've never really kind of had this candid conversation so it's super cool i think it might be kind of cool to do a couple more of these um kind of hear some other students in the future and, and and see what they thought and where they're at yeah absolutely i think uh you know to your point on the community angela um you know from the you know the veteran side um there's a community that's also pretty awesome that i just kind of want to plug in there too is uh, vetsec we work directly with them. Uh, we've had a lot of really keen students come through from their program. They have a lot of their own free trainings and things. I would say if you are a veteran that is trying to break into cybersecurity and you aren't part of that community, that needs to change because they're, they're pretty awesome. And that's VET, V-E-T-S-E-C. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and then how would somebody um, find out about them? Is, it, is there like a website or a- Yeah, it's like vet, vetsec.com. Okay. Um, yeah, they're active on social media. Tom Marsland is kind of like the head of that uh, that group. And uh, he's been a great guy to work with and, and um, really actually cares about, you know, trying to get people in and make sure that they have the resources they need, so. Very awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, of course. Well, this has been great, guys. Thank you so much for sharing. And I can't wait to have you on again and hear about what you're doing in the coming months. Awesome. Thanks Thank for you. having us, Angela. You're Ooh. welcome. All right. Thanks, Sid, Will, Anthony. Talk to you later. Have a good day. Have a good one. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you learned something new and the story made you think, then share ITSBmagazine.com with your friends, family, and colleagues. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society.